Today on Studio One, find out which junk food companies are jumping on the anti-obesity bandwagon. Also, we'll tell you why bracket tournaments at work might be a good thing. And move over, dogs and cats. We'll show you what it takes to raise an exotic pet. From the University of North Dakota, this is Studio One, celebrating 25 years. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Studio One. I'm Monty Cashel. And I'm Ann Hook. Were there, well, there's this debate whether America is a melting pot or a mosaic. Mm. I think it's all of the above. All of the above? A lot of different people. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of cultures. We have Norwegians, Polish, I know I'm Irish. But there is this correlation between our ethnic identity and success in the classroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. and we're going to hear more from that from a professor of psychology, and she's going to talk about her research with that project. All right, excellent. We'll listen to her talk about that. Also, when many people think candy company, healthy food options might not come to mind. Find out how some corporations are trying to change their image. And taxes are due on April 15th. There are many things to consider when filing. Later we will meet a woman who helps others reach that deadline successfully. Before we get to all of that, here's today's news with Ali Strand. Thanks, Monty and Ann. The Supreme Court began the second day of arguments Wednesday concerning the same-sex marriage debate. Protesters rallied outside the Supreme Court building as two gay marriage cases were reviewed. The court expressed more willingness to address the Defense of, defense of Marriage Act. This legislation denies federal benefits to married homosexual couples. However, the nine justices displayed a more conflicted approach to make any closing decisions on the Proposition 8 gay marriage ban. This would make gay marriage illegal in the state of California. The Supreme Court hopes to resolve both cases in June. A landslide occurred on Whidbey Island off the coast of Washington early Wednesday morning. The nat natural disaster forced the evacuation of 34 homes. Half of the houses were below the cliff, causing the residents to be evacuated by rescue boats. The Island County Sheriff says evacuees have been transported to temporary shelter. The landslide stretched across almost 500 yards and dropped nearly 700 yards down to the water. Homes below were struck by falling trees and dirt. However, no one was injured. As a result, a road was also wiped out. Flowers and showers aren't the only things that will be reappearing this spring. Come April 25th, new TSA regulations will take effect in airports across the country. These rules will allow passengers to carry small pocket knives and sporting equipment, such as hockey sticks and golf clubs, with them on the plane. Many flight attendants and other airport personnel are upset with the change. They say it is putting them at greater risk. The blades are to be no longer than 2.3 inches long and a half an inch wide, but some say they could prove lethal in an attack. The TSA stands by the policy, saying that the changes are part of their risk-based approach to security and aligns with the current European standards. Planning a vacation usually involves warm weather, but some people are venturing to the coldest place on Earth. 35,000 tourists are expected to visit Antarctica this year. That's up from 2,000 a year in the 1980s. The continent is an attraction for watching penguins from the deck of a ship, but visitors have been making the move inland. However, this increase can cause danger to the tourist and the continent. Skydiving and scuba diving have become the most popular activities. What the tourists don't know is Antarctica is the coldest and highest continent in the world. There are many cases of hypoxia, which is a lack of oxygen. Environmental consultants say boats can pollute water and air, creating the potential for more devastating damage. With the emerging obesity epidemic, junk food companies are tackling this health issue head on. But things aren't as sweet as they appear. Cold, sweet, sugary. These are the words that come to mind when one thinks of soda. But anti-obesity? Soft drink giant Coca-Cola has recently launched an advertising campaign pledging to fight obesity, and some experts are finding it difficult to swallow. Well, I think the more that we can encourage people to make good food choices, the better. And it is difficult to kind of reconcile that aspect. Mars Incorporated has also jumped aboard the healthy marketing bandwagon. The company wants to make a proactive approach to health issues in the nation, especially obesity. It's kind of a strategy to sell their goods out there because nowadays people are getting very health conscious. But even though junk food companies are offering healthy alternatives, the facts aren't sugar-coated. 
According to the U.S. Census Bureau, Americans consume about 7.7 million pounds of candy annually. The reality is that this country has a major health problem and obesity is an underlying factor of that. The research is not showing that we're reversing the trends. No matter what marketing is out there, it may come down to one simple truth. Healthy lifestyles start with healthy choices. With photographer Ann Hook, I'm Dora Brello reporting for Studio One. Last month, the president of Mars Chocolate rallied other major candy makers to come up with ways to help solve the obesity crisis. She plans to display calorie content more prominently on the packaging and reformulate recipes for better nutrition. And that's the news for now. Monty Nan. Thanks a lot, Allie. Well, some people just have to have that chocolate fix, mm -hmm. you know. You always get that craving. <laughs> always in moderation. Though. Always in moderation, <laughs> right. All right, well, we're going to go to Kellen Peters over in the weather studio, and he's going to talk more about the big melt that may be hitting North Dakota. Thanks, Anna Monty. Yeah, you know, a lot of water currently on the ground, especially in the northern part of the United States. Now, the National Weather Service recently put out a spring flood outlook. So we have some numbers here for you, but these are as of March 28th. So we're going down first to Fargo-Moorhead area, and they're saying right down uh, that there is a greater than 99% chance of seeing some moderate flooding in the area and over 98% uh, chance of even major flooding. The river currently is at just above 15 feet down in Fargo, and it is expected to crest uh, around anywhere from April 15th to the 22nd. But if we move, or excuse me, uh, tw moderate flooding is at 25 feet and major flooding is at 30 feet. But if we do move uh, 75 miles north just up to Grand Forks, seeing they have a chance to see some flooding as well. Uh, chance of moderate flooding is at 97%, chance of major flooding at 50%. There in Grand Forks, uh, the river level is at uh, just over 16 feet as of March 26. Now the moderate flood stage there is at 40 feet. Major flooding, however, is at 46 feet. And the river there is expected to crest anywhere from that to April 22nd to the end of the month. So there is still a lot of factors that can happen until that time being that can either increase flooding or even decrease it. But the main thing that will draw a lot of attention over the next few days and even weeks will be the Fargo-Moorhead area. The good news is, however, is that seeing a, a precipitation outlook over the next uh, couple of weeks, you can see it's going to be average in the, uh, throughout North Dakota and Minnesota. And hopefully we don't see a whole lot more precipitation to add to this uh, problem that could occur. Seeing it temperature-wise at all, it's going to be colder than average throughout uh, North Dakota, Minnesota, and up in Canada. But hopefully temperatures will start spiking back up once we start getting into April. If we talk about flooding, we're, um, might as well have a, a trivia question about, right? A little history for you. How many dollars of damage did the 97 flood occur, uh, cause during the Red River Valley? And that Red River Valley is including uh, Fargo, Grand Forks, and Winnipeg. But we will have an answer for you a little bit later in the show. All right, thanks, Kellen. Thank you. Oh, how many years has it been since that flood? 97 was, was the big one. I mean, mm -hmm. it has flooded since then, but uh, you know, Flooding is always expensive. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it brings in so much, uh, you know, mud and silt and things you have to clean up. It's just mm -hmm. really expensive. All right, well, let's turn to sports highlights now. We have hockey on deck with Brian Gendro. Thanks, Monty Nan. Choosing to exercise is a wise decision. Research has now found that it may make you wise as well. A study performed by the University of Montreal shows that middle-aged or older people who exercise receive a boost in brain power. The study was conducted in overweight men who started to exercise regularly for just a few months. They found that it, as their waist shrunk, their mental agility grew. Researchers say the men's brains benefited when the health of their arteries improved. But it just makes common sense. If you're moving, there's blood going to the brain. You know? and, and if you're exercising, there's oxygen also. And so you know, if you think about it, it just makes sense. The men surveyed performed better on mental tasks, including tests of attention, processing speed, short-term memory, and flexibility of thought. It's now time for the Studio One Sports Trivia Question. Who was the last team to win the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament and then fail to reach it the next year, as the Kentucky Wildcats did this year? You have four choices on the screen, and the answer to that one will be coming up later in the show. That's the sports. Monty and Ann. Thanks for that, Brian. 
In a new action movie, an unseen enemy threatens human life by taking over their bodies and erasing their memories. A young girl must risk everything to protect those she cares about most. We'll preview that film. Also, the words tax audit can be scary. Next, we will talk to a woman who knows how to avoid an extra note from the Internal Revenue Service. Life is busy, but many professionals are finding ways to advance their career with a Master's in Business Administration at the University of North Dakota. Students attend UND online and on campus. The program is nationally recognized and emphasizes one-on-one -on -one with faculty. Find the title you deserve. Enroll today. At the University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, classes have real-life application. Mentors guide students. Our work improves quality of life by answering tough questions with creativity and innovation. The University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, training tomorrow's engineering and geology experts today. What does cancer look like? What about diabetes, heart disease? Medical laboratory professionals are a vital link in the treatment of disease and maintenance of health. They investigate clues found in the body that will direct patient care. The University of North Dakota's laboratory science programs are some of the most innovative, far-reaching, fully accredited programs in the nation. The UND School of Medicine and Health Sciences can help you become one of the few who see beneath the surface. This scene is familiar, but you and your friends are at risk. One in three Americans will die from heart disease or stroke. Think about it, one in three. Every day, more than 2,000 Americans die from cardiovascular disease. The Million Hearts Initiative works to prevent one million heart attacks and strokes. Understand the risks, get active, and reduce sodium and trans fats in your diet. It's a silent killer, but now is the time to take control of your health. Learn more about making a heart healthy future. From the University of North Dakota, this is Studio One, your source for news, weather, and entertainment. The tax deadline is right around the corner. It can be a stressful time of the year for some. Tax specialist Kritzi Litzinger is here to tell us how to avoid the dreaded tax audit. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, what do you have to do to become a tax preparer? You have to take uh, the basic income tax course that we offer at H&R Block. It's about three and a half months, 75 hours worth. So, okay. And you have to pass the exam. So is that a lot of math, I'm assuming? It is a lot of math, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and right now, of course, uh, getting into April, it's go time for tax people like you. Yes, it is. So what is it like right now in the office? It's busy. Um, people wanting to get in and get, in, get it done by the deadline. Um, some people file extensions if they're not ready. But yeah, it's, it's the busy time. We have 18 days left. So, so you're counting down yep, the days. Yes. Yeah. So how do you prepare uh, or your office prepare for the onslaught of people that are coming in at the last last moment? Um, we just make sure we have enough people working to do, uh, handle the clients that come in and um, we have a really good group of people that are tax professionals. So Okay and you know there are different ways to file taxes. One of them of course coming to a, a business like yours and, Correct, and yep. coming in and having someone do it for them. What are some of the common ways that people put taxes together? Um, they do them themselves. Um, there is a lot of online software that they can do. Um, those are the basic three that people do, like to do. So. Okay, and um, you know, you you may be uh, um, in a situation where you're seeing a lot of people come in, and they're they're trusting all their tax information with you. Yep. What about tax audits? What is a tax audit? 
An audit is something where the IRS looks at your return. If there's something missing or they question it, they'll send you a letter. Or they'll either want more confirmation of something um, to prove that that's either your income or expenses, stuff like that, something that might trigger an audit. Okay, so how do they happen? What does trigger an audit? Um, you need to, one, file a correct return. Um, missing information, sometimes people don't put everything on their return. Um, like um, 1099s is a big one. Um, signing your name is a really big one. So just something <laughs> as simple as signing yep. your name? Yep. Okay. Make sure your social security number is on there okay. correct and so, your name is spelled right. Gosh, so those just seem like simple, simple things. Yes, it is. Okay, I'd like to ask you the top three things then, and, and you might have started with yep. the first one. Yep. File a file correct, correct return, return is the first tip. Um, What's best, hire someone or do the tax software thing yourself? Um, I guess whatever you're comfortable with uh, filing your return. We um, are, do a pretty good job um, explaining things to our clients. Um, you want to make sure that you have all your 1099s, your W-2s, anything that has income. The IRS receives that from people that send it into the IRS to report income they've given to you. So. Okay, and the second tip you gave was keep good records and check your math. Yes. So why, I mean, I shouldn't say why. I know why. It, you have to be accurate, but keeping good records, what do you mean by that? Um, if you're self-employed or own a business, keep records of everything. Um, because if you put something on your return and it's not true and you get audited, the IRS is going to want proof of that. Okay. So. And there are a lot of procrastinators. Yes. There are a lot of people who are unorganized. Yes. Some of those people are one and the same. <laughs> and they come in, um, I'm sure. Can you tell us about a nightmare situation in the past that you've had with someone? Well, um, with, if, with an audit, um, if you get like big distributions, um, cash in like IRAs or anything like that, and don't report it and you get a letter... Um, there has been clients that owe the IRS hundreds of thousands of dollars because of it, because they tack on penalties and interest onto that money. Sure. So, Okay. Now, tip three was report all 1099 forms. Yes, correct. What is a 1099 form? 1099 can be uh, miscellaneous income, self-employed, um, interest, stuff along that lines that comes on a 1099. It's, it looks like a W-2, but it's not. It's just something that is reported to you that you've earned some type of income from. So. Okay. Now, some people I know I've heard have made a mistake on their return, sent it in, and then they get a call back and they say, you made a mistake. Here's where it was. Um, so how do they find out those mistakes? They, the IRS has individuals that go through the returns. They check the returns. So every return is, is checked? Yes, every return is checked. Okay, so um, is it bad to just make a mistake and let them figure it out? No, you want to ha file a correct return. Okay, what is the, why is that bad then? You don't want to, you know, most people get afraid of the IRS. You see an IRS letter in the mail and you're like, oh no, what happened? Um, if you file it correct, you don't have anything to worry about, so. Okay. And uh, what are some consequences of not filing correctly time after time? Uh, penalties and interest. It tax on every month for not filing it correct. And if you don't correct it over years, it can build up to thousands of dollars okay. you, that you owe the IRS, so. And uh, again, procrastination is a big thing. What about a tax extension? Can it just be because uh, I forgot to do it, I'll get an extension? Uh, you can file an extension if you don't have all your documents together. Um, some people don't get statements from businesses like banks and that till later. And um, it's good to file an extension if you think you're not going to be ready for it. So. All right. One last question for you. Why do you do what you do? What makes it fun to do this? Uh, yeah, I like numbers. And I like meeting new people and helping people plan for their future with their taxes. So. Well, I'm sure there'll be plenty of people out there who don't like numbers who will love to meet with you. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. for coming on the show today. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> coming up, every year, sports fanatics take part in March Madness brackets. People from all vocations take a stab at figuring out which college basketball team will end up victorious in the end. Find out how the bracket's reputation in the office is changing. Also, pets are special companions in many families. We'll show you one boy who shares a bond with two unusual animals. Studio One closed captioning is underwritten in part by Options, your disability information source. It's 
not the size of the woman in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the woman. My doctor tells me to play outside every day. I see a physician assistant in my rural clinic. I'm glad that she's here. But health care is changing. Rural North Dakota communities face workforce shortages, particularly in primary care. The University of North Dakota School of Medicine and Health Sciences addresses the state's health care needs by educating the next generation of health care professionals. We advocate for improved health in rural communities. Your future depends on this moment. Take the path that leads to your future. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where personal connections matter, where classmates become friends, where leading scholars become mentors. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Few people would want to imagine losing everything they love. Twilight Saga worldwide best-selling author Stephanie Meyer is the creator of The Host. The main character Melanie will, will risk everything to protect the people she loves. Parasitic aliens called souls invade the earth. They take over bodies and erase minds. Their goal is to perfect the world they take over. Melanie's body has been inhabited by a soul, but she refuses to let that stop her. The alien parasite begins to see Melanie's memories and eventually finds a connection with her loved ones. Melanie is trapped inside an alien's mind who speaks to her mentally. They keep hope of finding the other humans in her group. A soul is inserted into a body. The human kind of vanishes. They, they disappear. They go away. But Melanie does not because she's very strong and she's very tough and very stubborn. In the film, the unaffected humans must take shelter in a refuge. This refuge was filmed in the northwestern New Mexico desert near a geological formation known as Ship Rock. Filmmakers had to recreate the structure to form an elaborate community. The host opens in theaters March 29th with a PG-13 rating. Now it's time to look at the events happening in your area. Dogs, cats, and geckos? One of those things do not belong. Some people want more than ordinary pets. We visited a home where not so cuddly is the norm. Cohen is like many other seven-year-old boys. He likes watching cartoons, has a short attention span, and is responsible for feeding the family pets. The food is happier than most. Come in like he just big on and play them catching them with nets. Them are Phineas and Ferb. Cohen owns two leopard geckos. They are not his first shot at a unique pet. He first tested his love for exotic animals with a salamander. Not everyone wants to play with Phineas and Ferb. I didn't really have a choice. They just showed up. Cohen says the rest of the family, including his cousins, like getting to hold them too. Exotic pets come with challenges, especially in a drier environment. People should know that they do have specific needs, more so than like a cat or a dog. Aubrey says, just like any other pet, there are things people should know before getting exotic pets. Reptiles specifically can carry salmonella, so you just need to make sure that whenever you're handling these pets, you are always doing it properly. Cohen knows what Phineas and Ferb need to survive. Small for the camera. Good job, he's looking at the camera. So he can continue to be like any other seven-year-old boy with not-so-ordinary pets. I'm Jamie Eckert reporting for Studio One. 
With cold-blooded animals, thermal lamps and spray bottles are needed to keep them healthy. There are about 900 species of geckos. They can live to be more than 10 years old. Lucky for Cohen, not so for the grasshoppers. Coming up, always winter and not ever Christmas seems to be the theme in the Midwest. Find out how the lingering snow and cold could be a good thing. That story plus news, sports and weather in the next half hour of Studio One. Closed captioning for Studio One is underwritten in part by NDAD, helping others to help themselves. At the University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, classes have real-life application. Mentors guide students. Our work improves quality of life by answering tough questions with creativity and innovation. The University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, training tomorrow's engineering and geology experts today. Life is busy, but many professionals are finding ways to advance their career with a Master's in Business Administration at the University of North Dakota. Students attend UND online and on campus. The program is nationally recognized and emphasizes one-on-one -on -one with faculty. Find the title you deserve. Enroll today. What does cancer look like? What about diabetes, heart disease? Medical laboratory professionals are a vital link in the treatment of disease and maintenance of health. They investigate clues found in the body that will direct patient care. The University of North Dakota's laboratory science programs are some of the most innovative, far-reaching, fully accredited programs in the nation. The UND School of Medicine and Health Sciences can help you become one of the few who see beneath the surface. From the University of North Dakota, celebrating 25 years, this is Studio One. Welcome back to Studio One. Thanks for joining us today. Well, a lot of people with their families like to collect a little bit of money, a little mm -hmm. bit of vacation time, and take a family somewhere, somewhere mm -hmm. special, right? And uh, Family Fun Magazine actually did a survey, mm -hmm. and they wanted to know where the best family vacation destination was. Mm -hmm. Yellowstone National Park came really? out Really? Is it just because they want to see the Great Geyser? Well, <laughs> you know, it didn't say that, but what it did do is it pointed out that a lot of the top destinations were outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. So we went out and asked people what their favorite uh, destination was, and their answers are coming up in the next little bit. Also, in the next 30 minutes on Studio One, several states have laws that protect underage drinkers from getting in trouble with the police if they seek medical attention. Minnesota might be next. Find out the pros and cons of medical amnesty. Also, acting is one of the many talents a person can have. We'll talk to two women who share their love of theater with the community. And our cultures help shape who we are. Later, we will learn how our ethnic identity can be tied to academic achievement. But first, here's today's news with Ali Strand. Thanks, Monty and Ann. Instead of the usual hustle and bustle of traffic, Chicago streets were filled with teachers this week. Hundreds gathered to protest plans to close 54 schools and consolidate 11 others. The Chicago public schools make up the nation's third largest school district. Officials have spoken out saying that many of the city schools are underused and under-resourced. They say reducing the number of schools and condensing students would allow for a higher quality education with access to better resources. Chicago Teachers Union President Karen Lewis argues that reducing schools won't allow for community and parent involvement. Mayor Rahm Emanuel appears to be holding his ground, saying the time for negotiations is over. The plan will be brought in front of the Board of Education for a vote in late May and is expected to pass. 
Amanda Knox is expected to go on retrial six years after the murder of her roommate. Italian Supreme Court judges ruled Tuesday she would stand trial again. She and her boyfriend had been found guilty in 2009, originally after the court tried her the first time. However, in 2011, she, the convictions were overturned and she returned to the United States. There's a possibility of her being extradited to Italy for the new case. During the past decade in the dieting world, eating gluten-free has become the new fad. What started as a way for people suffering from celiac disease has now become a normal diet for many Americans. Celiacs is a condition that makes digesting food with gluten difficult. A market research group called NPD continually tracks issues facing consumers, such as dieting and nutrition, on a bi-weekly basis. In January of this year, they reported that one in every three adults claimed to cut down on gluten or avoid it completely. Because of this new trend, many restaurants accommodate to this diet. Now we try to have gluten-free items every day of the week just because, like you said, some people are doing it because they're celiac where they have to eat gluten-free, but we have a lot of customers that come in that eat gluten-free to help with depression or all these other ailments. Studies have shown that eating gluten-free can lead to weight loss and lower cholesterol. Adrian Peterson's first downs combined with Peyton Manning's touchdown passes could make somebody rich this fall. New Jersey is allowing various casinos to offer fantasy sports gambling. The State Division of Gaming Enforcement says they will allow casinos to accept entry fees from gamblers. The casinos will pay out winnings from the cash cages. The regulations will become effective on April 22nd. The casinos are still deciding whether bets could be made online or in person. Although a person must be 21 to legally consume alcohol, medical amnesty protects underage drinkers legally if they seek medical attention. A bill allowing medical amnesty in Minnesota has passed through two legislative committees and is leaving other states wondering whether they too should pass the bill. Close enough, right? For many students, college means three things. Academics, friends, and parties. As underage binge drinking becomes an increasing problem, so do increasing blood alcohol levels. Uh, I've been here at UND Police Department 12 years. Uh, I've seen a lot of different, you know, a lot of different variations of alcohol levels. As the issue of underage drinking is coming to light, so is the topic of medical amnesty. People are questioning whether or not students who abuse alcohol and seek medical treatment should worry about legal disciplinary action. Opinions on whether this law is needed are mixed. If they would get in trouble when they went to the hospital, that would prevent them from trying to seek help when they're overly intoxicated. Therefore, the risk of you know serious injury or death could be you know be higher. I don't. I've, I've seen it so much in college that I don't think they should just because I've seen people do it so much and just pass out and they're fine the next day. Some feel that the hospital trip is vital. If they're to the point where they're um, they're not responding they're not talking, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, then yeah, they need to be to, to go in just like anybody who's underage or not. If there's medical issues, then yeah, they need to go to the hospital. Many underage drinkers are concerned that if they do go into the hospital, they will get into some sort of legal trouble. And that's where medical amnesty comes in. With, with the amnesty thing, is, as long as they go to the hospital, they're not going to get in trouble. And that's what we want them to do. As the debate continues across the U.S., many wonder whether the law will promote drinking or save lives. They don't want to lose any more kids from drinking, and a lot of them have died because they didn't get to the hospital in time. If they did, they would have been, it'd still be here. With photographer Kelby Leak, this is Avery Hagasog reporting for Studio One. The Minnesota bill does not provide legal protection to an adult who provides alcohol to minors. And that's the news. Monty Nam. Thanks, Sally. You know, whatever, in that, in that kind of a situation, you would just mm -hmm. hope if someone needs help, they would go to the emergency room or hospital. Mm -hmm. Regardless, you always have to be safe. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go one last time to Kellen Peters over in the weather studio, who's going to talk about some out-of-season weather over in St. Louis. Yeah, thanks, Anna Monty. Yeah, we're almost into April, and we're still talking about snow. It's exactly what happened in the central part of the United States. Down in St. Louis, nice Colorado low system swept through the area earlier this week. I really just put a burden on the roads. Uh, crews for a Missouri Department of Transportation was working around the clock, had over 200 cars out in the area. You can see that's uh, St. Louis's International Airport. They had over 100 flights canceled 
and create uh, people to be stranded at the airport until they could find uh, alternative travel arrangements. So quite a lot going on in the area. So if we go down to the central part of the United States, seeing, showing exactly what happened in St. Louis, this purple area right here, this is the area mostly affected anywhere from 12 to 14 inches in the area. However, just north of St. Louis, 14 inches was your winner uh, with the greatest snowfall total that did occur. Now there were two recorded deaths uh, during this storm that happened from uh, uh, driving accidents and the storm did continue to move out east into Illinois, Springfield, Illinois and out east and they got uh, a large amount of snow as well. But when we're talking about all this snow and stuff, it seems to maybe uh, put a bad mood into you, but for when it comes to some farmers, they tend to stay a little bit more optimistic. Many people have been complaining about the long and snowy winter, but it can be a positive thing. Farmer Jay Ross says that the snow is actually helpful for his crops. One benefit is uh, for all the beets we got piled at the sugar beet plant, a good long season cold helps them store a lot better and gives the factories enough time to process them. Not only does the snow help the processing of crops, it also helps make the soil able to grow them. Well, I'm sure glad to see the snow this year because it's so dry out there and um, it'll, we need the subsoil moisture. So the snow will help soak in and rebuild that subsoil moisture. Last year, the fourth warmest winter on record actually caused dry soil for this season's crops. Uh, last year is very uncommon. And I believe we started planting ourselves on April 4th last year, so um, doesn't look like we'll be in there that early this year. So while the majority of the population criticizes all of the snow and the negative temperatures, many farmers see it as a positive. With photographer Alex Stadnick, I'm Tasha Olson reporting for Studio One. Brings us back to our weather question of the week for the historic 1997 flood that did occur in the Red River Valley. How much uh, flood damage did it occur? Anywhere from two billion, two and a half billion, three billion or $3.5 billion. Answer is D, $3.5 billion. So quite a large amount of money stretching all the way from Fargo up to Winnipeg. All right, well hopefully we don't have that much damage this spring, Kellen. Yeah, hopefully not. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the. Uh the cost with flood, it's always something that you have to think of too. And, and even flood fighting is very mm -hmm. expensive as well. All right, it's time to turn to Sports One last time with Brian Gendro. Thanks, Monty and Ann. It's that time of year again. March Madness is hitting the nation by storm. Companies have said in the past that it's decreased productivity at work, but that may not be the case. Most of us during the day uh, will check stats, live updates, via internet or on our cell phones rather than having a TV to actually watch the game. A new study from Office Team says that some managers feel that March Madness can be a positive for the work environment. Some employees found new ways the tournament can benefit their workplace. I mean, it's certainly a communication conversation starter. Um, you know, we'll have coaches coming through, checking their brackets, see how they're doing. And One in five of the 1,000 managers surveyed said that March Madness activities in the workplace, such as an office pool that doesn't involve money, have a positive impact on employee morale. With our brackets, it's, it's for pride, you know, bragging rights forever who wins because there's no money involved or any prize at the end. If, you know, there's a big upset or something like that, we'll all be, what? Oh no, my bracket's destroyed. The odds of having a perfect bracket is over nine quintillion to one, but fun in the office is guaranteed. Reporting for Studio One, I'm Kyle C. Rockers. 75% of managers surveyed don't feel that March Madness activities have any impact on their business. Now the answer to this week's Studio One Sports Trivia question, who is the last team to win the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament then fail to reach it the next year? The answer is B, NC State, and that was the team that Jim Valvano led to the championship in 1983. That's your sports. Monty and Ann? Thanks, Brian. When you hear the word vacation, you may think of the crazy Griswold family from the familiar National Lampoon movies. Many real families take a vacation once a year to a destination of their choice. We wanted your thoughts on, the favorite, on your favorite family vacation spot and your answers are still to come. 
Also, acting is a way we can express ourselves through different characters. We'll show you two women who express their love of acting by sharing their knowledge with others. This scene is familiar, but you and your friends are at risk. One in three Americans will die from heart disease or stroke. Think about it. One in three. Every day, more than 2,000 Americans die from cardiovascular disease. The Million Hearts Initiative works to prevent one million heart attacks and strokes. Understand the risks, get active, and reduce sodium and trans fats in your diet. It's a silent killer, but now is the time to take control of your health. Learn more about making a heart-healthy future. At the University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, classes have real-life application. Mentors guide students. Our work improves quality of life by answering tough questions with creativity and innovation. The University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, training tomorrow's engineering and geology experts today. What does cancer look like? What about diabetes, heart disease? Medical laboratory professionals are a vital link in the treatment of disease and maintenance of health. They investigate clues found in the body that will direct patient care. The University of North Dakota's laboratory science programs are some of the most innovative, far-reaching, fully accredited programs in the nation. The UND School of Medicine and Health Sciences can help you become one of the few who see beneath the surface. Most people don't know what it's like to be an entrepreneur. My time clock is around the clock. My ideas are fresh, but they need research and development. My business plan includes marketing strategies, legal documents, and a budget. My startup became possible through mentorship, hands-on experience, and learning from experts in the field. The Center for Innovation has contributed to more than 400 University of North Dakota student startups. Come with an idea. Leave with a business. Celebrating 25 years, you're watching Studio One from the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks. There would be no theater without actors. However, more than good acting is needed to make a performance successful. Curious community members gathered to learn from experienced theater enthusiasts. Come on in. <laughs> Hi. Nicole started off singing. However, once she went to college, she decided to make a transition. I decided not to study music. I really liked acting. Nicole has a theater arts degree from the University of North Dakota. Her education and experience has provided her with a unique skill. There's constantly people wanting to give theater a try and they need to learn things like makeup and I can teach okay, people how so to do that. We're gonna take the highlight color. Although she receives no profit for her time commitment to acting, she says she finds satisfaction in doing what she loves. It's my passion, it's what I do. Nicole has been in many community theater productions and says that diversity is key. You would not believe how much you need a variety of people to put on a community play. UND Theater Department Assistant Professor Emily Cherry also believes in community theater. It's never too late or too early. Uh, it's it's something that's important for our community and it's uh, a fun <laughs> way to get involved, meet new people, try new things. She also says new experiences can be enlightening. It doesn't matter uh, what career you have, you can always do theater or appreciate theater or get involved. Although trying something new can be intimidating, as the initial shock fades, the reward becomes clear. You develop new relationships, you become a better communicator, um, and you make uh, it's a skill that I think is valuable beyond the theater. People like Nicole and Emily take what they love and inspire others. And that's what builds a community. I'm Katie Wilson, reporting for Studio One. The theater classes were created after multiple requests were made by community members. They were offered by the Grand Forks Fire Hall Theater throughout March. There is also an American Association of Community Theater website which offers networking, resources, and support for community theater needs. Many families go on a vacation at least once a year. Family Fun Magazine recently surveyed more than 2,000 families on their favorite vacation spot. Yellowstone National Park landed the number one spot.
We wanted your thoughts on your favorite family vacation destination. Washington, D.C. because there was, I don't know, I like cities and I don't know, it was really nice. Anywhere that um, is with family or friends and sometimes that's just local. Maybe getting in the car with a bunch of girls, going, um, going out for the evening, going with my husband, my family, my grandchildren. Going to Wyoming and seeing the mountains. The best place to take a vacation would be uh, Lake Louise, uh, Alberta, Canada. And what it is, is uh, you have a uh, lake on top of the mountains. Snorkeling in Grand Cayman, because I like the ocean and it was warm. Well, we went to Mall of America and then we stayed in this big hotel with all the these water slides that were really tall and it was fun. We went to Australia three years ago and it was fun because it was everything was way different than around here. A comment from our Facebook page from Oslo, Norway. Guru says, Hemsedal, Norway, with family and friends. We are on our way home from our mountain lodge. The weather has been fantastic and the cross-country conditions, super. Also, Cody from Fargo, North Dakota said, Fort Ransom, North Dakota, camping in tents, walking trails, bonfires, lazy river, kayaking, canoeing, a little fishing, thunderstorms. Is it summer yet? Still to come. College can be difficult with late night studying and early exams. Next, we will talk to a researcher who says a college student's ethnic background intersects with success in the classroom. Studio One is a television show produced by students at the University of North Dakota. You can be a part of the graphics team, the marketing team, news team, programming team, production team. Training never ends. You get to produce guests, you get to do the reporting side of it. It's really worth the experience. You will not regret it. This scene is familiar, but you and your friends are at risk. One in three Americans will die from heart disease or stroke. Think about it. One in three. Every day, more than 2,000 Americans die from cardiovascular disease. The Million Hearts Initiative works to prevent one million heart attacks and strokes. Understand the risks, get active, and reduce sodium and trans fats in your diet. It's a silent killer, but now is the time to take control of your health. Learn more about making a heart-healthy future. My doctor tells me to play outside every day. I see a physician assistant in my rural clinic. I'm glad that she's here. But health care is changing. Rural North Dakota communities face workforce shortages, particularly in primary care. The University of North Dakota School of Medicine and Health Sciences addresses the state's health care needs by educating the next generation of health care professionals. We advocate for improved health in rural communities. It's not the size of the woman in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the woman. someone who helps us achieve our goals. They encourage us to strive for success in the classroom as well as our careers. Counseling psychology professor Rachel Navarro is here to talk about the rewards of being a mentor through her research with minority communities. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. Okay, to start it off, how did you become interested in this field of research? 
really I was I became interested because it's something that is kind of dear and uh, dear to me in terms of my own experience being somebody from a multi-ethnic background and mm -hmm. going to college and running into different kind of barriers um, and finding people that could support me to help me through um, my educational pursuits. Okay, well you talk about your own culture. How did your own cultural background influence your academic pursuits? I think being um, a multiracial person and being somebody who um, came from both a Czechoslovakian background and a Puerto Rican background was really interesting to other people and so I started becoming kind of, kind of interested in that aspect of my life and how that affects academic success and so mm -hmm. then interested in how other people's experiences um, in terms of being multiracial or from other oppressed cultural groups and how they um, experience the academic environment. Okay, so kind of redirecting back to your own research, what are the cultural variables you are studying? Um, I'm studying a slew of cultural variables, um, mainly like ethnic identity, um, acculturation, um, enculturation, cultural values such as uh, personalismo, feminismo, those sorts of things within predominantly um, Latino groups. Mm -hmm. What is the focus of your research? I am looking at um, the persistence of Latinos and whites in STEM fields like science, technology, engineering, and math, and right now really focusing on engineering and how cultural variables and personal variables as well as social cognitive variables influence persistence in engineering mm -hmm. fields. Well in America we do have a lot of people with ethnic cultures. We have Norwegians, mm -hmm. and you're saying Czechoslovakian. What minority group in particular do you focus your research on? Most of my research, like I said, is really with Latinos, um, the primarily with Mexican Americans. I've spent a lot of time in the Southwest where there's a predominantly Mexican American um, community, and so a lot of my research has been done there. Mm -hmm. What is the process of your research? How do you actually meet with a student and you collect your data? Uh, we do both quantitative and qualitative research, and so we do a lot of um, online surveys of the engineering students right now and then we call them and ask them to come and do like one-on-one -on -one interviews with some of our research assistants around their experiences within engineering. Mm -hmm. Well I can only imagine the close bond you create with the students that you mentor. You know what kind of re uh, relationship do you have with them? How close do you get with them? Um, fairly close. I, one of the values that I hold really dear is personalismo and having a real personal yet professional relationship with my students and so really getting to know them as people and what their needs are as people as well as what their needs are professionally and being able to provide them the kind of support that they need to uh, pursue the kind of careers that they want to pursue in the future. Mm -hmm. And so I have a handful of students that I feel really very close to and have been able to help in terms of their success in the field. Mm -hmm. Could you give me an example of a student that has been successful which you have mentored? Oh, sure. sure. <laughs> um, I actually have uh, one in mind who actually has uh, graduated. Her name is Dr. Cynthia Guzman. She's actually in Albuquerque, New Mexico and she's um, a postdoc and she's working on the Laguna Pueblo. I think it's the Laguna Pueblo. Mm -hmm. um, and so she's doing a lot of work with the native community there and doing a lot of um, mental health counseling but also helping that community in terms of getting grants to help support some of the infrastructure there and so she's done uh, just a fabulous job. Mm -hmm. Well in your research you focus really on academic persistence mm -hmm. so really success in the classroom for grades but when you think about you know college it's a lot more involved in that. So is research just purely on grades or is there any other satisfaction of the college experience that you go on to study? We, we're we looking at both academic persistence in terms of um, their grades and being able to graduate from school but also their academic satisfaction and how satisfied they are with their experiences in terms of their connections with faculty, other peers, um, and just with the environment at the school in general. So with the conclusions of your research, how does cultural identity affect higher education? Well, I think my, my research is still in progress and so what we're kind of just the preliminary data and what we're seeing is that when you have students from culturally d diverse groups, um, mm -hmm. it, when they are more steeped in their own culture, when they have higher ethnic identities, it seems to translate into a better s sense of who they are and then better, mm -hmm. better academic outcomes. And finally, what is the reward of your job? Why are you so passionate with this? Well, I think that I really want to see my research um, be applied within intervention and prevention programs to help students persist in school. And so um, having those programs um, be steeped in research um, is mm -hmm. really important to me, but also just the mentorship piece of it. I think that is where I probably get the most um, joy is being able to work with my doctoral students or my master's students in terms of helping them through the process and seeing what they can do that maybe I can't do in the field in terms of helping um, you know, eradicate health disparities and those sorts of things within the Latino community. Okay, well, good luck with your research and thank you so much for being on the show again. Thanks for having me. 
You're watching Studio One from the University of North Dakota. We'll be right back after this. Closed captioning for Studio One is underwritten in part by NDAD, helping others to help themselves. It's not the size of the woman in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the woman. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where they learn from leading experts, share in discoveries and create knowledge. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Most people don't know what it's like to be an entrepreneur. My time clock is around the clock. My ideas are fresh, but they need research and development. My business plan includes marketing strategies, legal documents, and a budget. My startup became possible through mentorship, hands-on experience, and learning from experts in the field. The Center for Innovation has contributed to more than 400 University of North Dakota student startups. Come with an idea. Leave with a business. Studio One is a television show produced by students at the University of North Dakota. You can be a part of the graphics team, the marketing team, news team, programming team, production team. Training never ends. You get to produce gas, you get to do the reporting side of it. It's really worth the experience. You will not regret it. on Studio One. Vinyl records are making a comeback. We'll show you one man with a special vintage collection. Plus, we'll have other news and entertainment stories for you. And we're going to leave you now with pictures of art in an urban setting. From all of us here at Studio One, have a great week. <laughs>